I'm Cass. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am setting up my May bullet journal. Now this month I themed it after a book called The Name of the Wind, which is book one in the King Killer Chronicles. Now if you've been following me recently, you know how quickly I fell into an obsession with this book and I thought it was time to make a bullet journal theme for it. Plus it's got a map. So that was also a pretty big influence. But without further ado, let's go ahead and hop right into the video. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that a actual cover page that isn't a map is very rare for me, but I really wanted to try out a bunch of new things with this journal setup, and I did, and I enjoyed the heck out of it. So this cover page is inspired by Pages by Amy over on Instagram. Her March theme was based off of RPG, magic and adventure games, and I just kind of modified it and put more elements that could relate to the Name of the Wind book. So I have a nice little backpack, some potion bottles, and a lute, which is a prominent part of the Name of the Wind. And throughout this theme, I used quite a bit of scrapbook paper as well for the titles, which wasn't the plan originally, and it was a very spur of the moment idea and I am so glad that I incorporated that element because it really added to the entire page. So I am just ripping up some more brown paper to put in the corners and gluing those suckers in. <laughs> and then I add a little bit of washi tape, which is also something I rarely use in my bullet journal, but I need to buy more because I am a washi tape fanatic now. I love how it looks and I don't know why I didn't incorporate more washi tape into my journal sooner. But now to the part where you've all been waiting for, and that is the map. So this is the Four Corners of Civilization, which is found in the special edition of the Name of the Wind book. And it was really fun to do this map, although a little bit more tricky than usual. Typically with the maps that I make, they are two pages, so I can make the details a little bit bigger. But because this was simply a one-page map, I had to shrink all of the details and use a .03 fine liner. And I suppose I should mention the other tools that I used are a Tombow Fudinovsky brush pen, and I used the hard tip for the maps because I like the little bit of give, but I don't want the strokes to be too thick. And then most of the detailing is done with the .03 Artist Loft, which is a Michaels brand. And I swear by that pen because it works as good as the Pigma Micron pens, except for it's cheaper. So <laughs> it's got that going for it. This is probably one of my favorite maps I've created, not because it looks the best or anything, but rather I really enjoyed the process of creating it. I've finally reached a point with my maps where I don't care about getting every single detail to look accurate or have the exact number of mountains and trees, but rather I take creative liberties and fill in gaps where I feel like it. So it's not 100% accurate, it is missing one or two locations I think I just couldn't fit, but it was fun to just add details where I wanted to add details and take out details where I didn't want them. Because in the past, especially with my April and May journals from last year, I was obsessed with getting every single detail right, every single branch, every single itty bitty anything I wanted included, just because I thought it would look more impressive, which granted, I think they do look very impressive, but after doing so many maps, I kind of got burnt out with trying to stick to exactly what the map looks like in the book. So to be able to just relax and enjoy the process of doing this map was definitely refreshing. And that was the goal of this whole journal setup was to do something new and refreshing for I tried to get out of my slump because I have been feeling in such a rut with my journal. I haven't been liking how it's been turning out. And so it was time to experiment with something new. And as you can see right here, this is a big change for what I usually do. Typically I do a full page calendar, but instead I did a mini calendar and I added a little quote underneath, added some details, but I use a combination of Notion and my bullet journal for planning. So it's not necessary for me to create weeklies because I typically make my weeklies on Notion. 
and then my calendar is simply used for events. So I realized I didn't need a full page calendar because I don't have that much going on in my life right now to need a full page calendar. Plus anything that I need to do, I can just add into my Notion. So it was definitely fun to do just a tiny little calendar and I really hope it works because it definitely was a time saver because those full size calendars are tedious to make with how large they are. Then on the bottom right, I added a little doodle of a book called Rhetoric and Logic, which I'm just now realizing that I completely misspelled, so ignore that. <laughs> Again with doing the headers using the ripped paper and then adding a little bit of corner details and some washi tape. I also really enjoyed having a color palette this month. Typically I am terrified of colors, so I'll usually stick to just having my spreads in black and white. But I decided to do browns and then as an afterthought I decided to add some orange just as a little pop of detail. In case you're wondering about the Tombow codes, I used 942 for the light brown and 977 for the darker brown, and then for the orange I used 933. I know this isn't the most outstanding and stunning combination of colors, but for me it is a huge leap in trying to learn color theory and actually having proper color themes and schemes. I am also highly aware that this color palette is very fall-like, and it is spring, but... I have never done themes that fit with the seasons, so why am I gonna change now? <laughs> On the right here, I have a Dutch door, which I have never done, and I have seen it so many times, so I was very excited to create this Dutch door spread. And along the side, those leaves were my mood tracker that I'll just color in based on my mood. And then on the same side, I have just a little column to write any to-dos because I couldn't think of what else to put there. And then on the flip side of the Dutch door, I'm creating my habit tracker, but I decided to do a graph instead of individual boxes and then adding more leaf details on the left hand side and actually coloring those in because they are just decorations versus the other side is a functional mood tracker. So the other side will eventually be colored in, but obviously I won't do that until the month starts. And then for my habits, I typically track 12, but I believe I cut it down to 10. So <laughs> baby steps. I would have shifted the graph over slightly, I think by one dot, but there's nothing I can do about it now. And I'm kind of excited to fill out using just little dots and such. I'm just excited to use this whole spread because I've tried so many new spreads that I don't typically do or different formats, I should say, not necessarily different spreads. Now on the right side, I have just a column for stats. So movies and TV shows that I watch, YouTube videos or YouTubers that I watch, and then music that I discover during the month. It's one of my favorite things to look back on and see what type of music I was listening to or what YouTubers that I discovered at the time. Then on the right hand side it reads I'll see you where the roads meet and I drew a really cruddy looking loot and then some pipes at the top which is a reference to the series and then I added just some leaves to decorate it and I had it positioned to where you can see it whenever the Dutch door is flipped. So I think it looks cool and it was so fun to just do calligraphy using a marker for the quote and not try to letter something out with my fine liners and then color it in and be all extra with it. I just winged it and it turned out looking good. On the next page, it is my finance tracker, which you can see me writing on that ripped piece of paper. I drew a little sword stabbing into it and then once again, adding those leaves as little details around before coloring them in with, you know, the usual colors. And then on the right side is my highlights page, which is essentially a one line a day page. So I just write the highlight of my day that I want to remember just using one line. And then I drew another loot and they gradually get worse and worse the further into the journal, <laughs> but I think it's fine. Then once again, I glue on the piece of paper and then I add more leaves as decor, which is super fun because I just freehanded them and I didn't have any sketches. I just kind of went for it. And then something else that I did that I don't typically do was add stripes on the finance tracker lines. I had seen someone do it on Instagram and I was like, that looks cool. I want to do that next time. 
and so I did. <laughs> and that is the finishing touches for my bullet journal. And here is the final flip through. I really enjoyed experimenting this month and I really like this new style and we'll see if I keep it up or perhaps I won't like it and I'll revert back to my old style. But for now, I really enjoyed it and I hope you enjoyed too. Thank you so much for watching the video all the way to the very end. It literally means the world to me that you stuck around this long. If you want to see more bookish or journaling content, be sure to subscribe. And also, if you want to chat with me, you can totally comment down below or join my new Discord server. I'm still learning Discord, so it might be a little rough, but it's got little categories to talk about your current reads and show off your own bullet journal themes, which I would love to see. And that's all I've got for now, and I hope to see you in the next one. Toodles!